Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another edition of the Pure Cloud Communities Q&A show, the show where we answer your pressing questions in the community. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager, and today we have a very special episode for you. Rather than diving into questions about how to use the product, we're going to talk a little bit about how to develop on it. That's right, we're digging into the topic of APIs, not something that we typically do, because that is reserved for primarily for the developer community. So today we're gonna to be referencing that community a lot, talking about the relationship before us, but our new expert has some great information and news to share with you. So I'm really looking forward to it. Her name is Becky Powell. She, and she comes all the way from the API world of Genesis. And what are we waiting for? Let's get her on the show. Becky, how are you? I'm good, Matt, how are you? Good, I'm doing well. I missed you while I was out in Phoenix. I know, I know. It was so nice and warm there. Oh yeah, that's how I put it. Um, so Becky, I've explained that today's episode is going to be about um, what's going on with, um, with our, well, with the community's relationship with the Developer Center. And I thought you were a great person to have on because you work exclusively with um, kind of building our developer tools and programs. So maybe can you just introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your role, and, um, and then I'll ask a few questions. Sure, my name is Becky Powell. I'm the principal product manager for the Pure Cloud uh, Open Platform. So that's our public APIs as well as our extensibility tools and our integrations. Um, and I also focus on developer experience, both working with our internal developers as well as customer and tech partner developers. So um, everything from the public APIs to the developer center to the developer tools is my kind of area of focus. Awesome. Um, and I know uh, that you spend a lot of time in the developer community, maybe not as much in our community, but maybe you can just talk to us a little bit about um, what's different about the developer community. Like how can it be used um, in collaboration with maybe the, uh, the community that I manage, the online community? Yeah, yeah, I would say there's two components of our developer resources that we have. There's the developer forum itself, which is our version of the community. Um, and then there's the developer center, which provides uh, open source examples, tutorials, videos, um, all of our API documentation. Um, so we, we typically have people coming into the developer community um, you know, with a slightly different use case, I think, than, than people might come into uh, the Pure Cloud community. We typically have developers that are looking for a very specific answer. I need to be able to do this. How do I do it? Where do I find the API to do this? Is there an SDK for this? Or conversely, I got a response that I didn't expect, or I got rate limited and I didn't expect. Help me to, to get past this. So it's a very developer-centric um, audience that comes to see us, and they're typically looking for a technical solution as opposed to a, you know, how do I, how do, I do this in, in the Pure Cloud user interface. Awesome. Um, Becky, I can't wait to dive into the community and answer some questions with you. So awesome. why wait? Let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the uh, first ones that you picked up, it comes to us from Baroth. Baroth asks, how to check how many agents are on queue or not using API? Um, this question goes as follows. Hi. We are trying to check how many agents are logged into the queue or not using API. If agents are on queue, then call should route to queue or else call should route to the assigned user. Is it possible to achieve this task using API? Please provide uh, some information. Thank you. What do you think, Becky? What advice do you have for Barack? Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to tackle the, the first part of his question. And let me just show you where I would go to to answer this question for myself. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to show you are the resources that are available in the public APIs. We have a tremendous amount of resources around analytics specifically. You can go into our dev center, look at our API resources, and then you'll see here in the left-hand sidebar how we've broken down our API resources by the APIs themselves. This question is specific to analytics. So you can see we have quite the quantity of different analytics endpoints that a user could use in an application to consume the kind of data, query and consume the kind of data that they're looking for. Everything from conversation data to flows to users to queues. This question was specific to queue details. So I would find my queue, my APIs around analytics and queues right here. And this is a post call to query for queue observations. 
you can see that I clicked on post and now I get quite a bit of documentation on this particular endpoint. It tells me the required permissions, the scopes, and what I should expect to include uh, in the body of the request, as well as some other helpful information. Cool. Quick question for you, Becky. Is there a way you can search those um, posts? Like maybe then you could just um, do a search straight up for Q or something like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this search bar is on every page of the Developer Center. I could have easily just gone directly into search for Qs and I would have gotten this information as well as results for uh, other, other um, documentation that we have here in the Developer Center. Uh, for instance, the Q query gives a little bit more information about what you can use these Q analytics to receive, along with some of the example queries. So this is all great information, but the, you know, one of the challenges of writing queries uh, it, it is just, of using queries is just that, it, it's writing the query itself. So I want to show you a developer tool that we have. And if I just go to Developer Center here, and this is the main page of the Developer Center, and I've got a variety of tools that I can use to help me as a coder. Um, develop my application. So I'm going to go right in here to the analytics query builder. This is actually a tool that will help me write that query. So I'm going to choose that Q observation query. And I want a query based on a specific Q ID, right? So let me just pull up my Q ID. Bear with me just a second. Yeah, sure. And I am in the App Foundry queue, and this is the queue that I want to uh, get the information on. And I believe the question from the community was, give me um, the number of agents that are on queue or off queue. So I'm going to add off queue users to my metrics, as well as on queue users to my metrics. Now you can see this tool has gone ahead and generated a query for me. Um, if I only need this information as a one-off and I don't want to build an application, this is a great little tool because I can immediately execute this query, get the query results if I only needed this information one time, or if I just wanted to validate that the query I wrote was actually going to provide uh, the data that I'm looking for. So here I can see the number of users that are in queue by their different, uh, by their different results. So we've got two interacting, three idle, and then our off-queue users as well. <clears throat> Cool. Um, I can then just, copy this query and use this in my application if I'm developing something custom. Becky, let's go ahead and knock out another question real quick. This question comes from Fernando. Congratulations, Fernando. I don't think I've seen you on the show before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Fernando wanted to know about JSON files for Postman download. J Fernando writes, good evening community. I would like to know if there is a link where I can grab the JSON files used in Postman for testing API calls. I've tried to use the links provided in the developer center to import those JSON files through links in Postman. But every time I try to import a group API, like alerting, architect, et cetera, it looks like the import process brings the entire API method, like the full API JSON import. I've tried several times. I even have downloaded every JSON file available from the copy link method and I'm finding all the files include the same methods and the file and the files and the file does have the same file size. Any help would be appreciated. Thanks in advance. Becky, what do you think? Any advice for our uh, new friend Fernando? Fernando, I'm so happy to tell you that we have fixed this issue. So here we are at the page that you referenced in your question on the Resource Center. Postman's a really nifty tool for those of you who aren't aware for uh, testing API calls. <clears throat> and what Fernando wanted to be able to do was just access uh, the API collection for a certain API and not the entire collection. So for instance, in the same vein that we've been talking about analytics, maybe I just want to test some analytics APIs and I don't want to uh, install the entire collection. So I can select here from all of the different collections. You'll notice that the collections correspond directly to the APIs themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the analytics collection and I'm just going to copy that URL. Here we are in Postman and I want to import just those analytics files. I'm going to import from link. I'm going to paste in that link that I just grabbed, click import, and I'm going to import that collection. And you can see now I have a new collection that just contains those analytics resources, not the entire collection. So happy to say that that's fixed.
But let me share with you an alternative to Postman, which is the built-in API Explorer tool that we have available in the Developer Center. So here I am in the Developer Center. I look in the Tools section and I click on the API Explorer tool. This tool allows me to interact with all of the different public API resources that we have available, test them out, and see the responses. So I can go here to analytics, just like I did in the previous example, and send requests and receive responses right here in the built-in tool. Awesome, that sounds great. Uh, Fernando, we hope that was helpful. And um, we're really glad to hear that uh, a new feature might have helped you in this quest, uh, in your quest for knowledge. So terrific. Uh, thanks for all that information, Becky. This next question comes to us from Mohammed. Mohammed writes, chat integration with mobile applications. This is a short question, the kind that I like. Mohammed wants to know, is there an option to integrate pure cloud chat with the customer mobile application? What do you think, Becky? Any advice for Mohammed? So Mohammed, you've got a couple different options for developing a web chat in your application. You can find our web chat APIs by going to the developer center, clicking on APIs, and clicking on web chat. This gives you our different web chat resources as well as examples, instructions for frame rendering, and additional documentation. We have some new APIs, agent chat APIs and guest chat APIs. If you click into these APIs, you'll see additional documentation and examples that will help you to build an application. Another resource that you have available is our SDK. So we do have SDKs for the Pure Cloud guest chat client as well as the Pure Cloud Agent Chat client. And you can use these libraries to easily develop against our API resources. Okay, we also have open source examples in our GitHub account, which you can navigate to from the Developer Center main page. You'll see here we've got lots of different examples here, lots of different repositories in our GitHub account. I wanna find one about chat and do a search. And here I have a couple different guest chat client examples, one in JavaScript and one in Java. And I can click on either of these and see a repository with a sample application that's been built that I can model my application off of. So lots of instructions here, how to use the SDK, the environments, how to make the requests, and everything else a developer would need to know to build a mobile chat application. All right, terrific. Mohammed. we hope that was helpful. And um, we know that uh, for everybody listening, uh, Becky has been showing us some really cool pages. If at any point you get confused about how to find any of those, um, feel free to ask a question in, I guess, either community, uh, my online community, our online community, or the developer community, and we can make sure you get the links that you need or help you navigate to them. This last one comes to us from Royzen. Royzen wants to know, does anyone have documentation or examples from purecloud.net SDK? Another short question right up my alley. And actually, it's the same as the title. Does anyone have documentation or examples from purecloud.net SDK? Woo, we made it. Becky, what do you think? Any advice for Royzen? Yeah, definitely. We have lots of different SDKs available in our developer center to suit a variety of developer needs, depending on the language of choice. Um, we have platform uh, API SDKs for JavaScript, Java, um, Ruby, .NET, and coming soon, uh, Swift and iOS SDK. So go to the developer center, uh, look for the SDK section, and you'll see all the SDKs that we have available along with documentation and instructions. If anybody has follow-up questions, I guess we'll have to hedge our bets on whether or not this my the uh, online community or the developer community is the best place for them, but I'm sure you'll put your thinking caps on and figure it out for yourselves. Becky, yet again, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. I learned a lot. I think our customers and partners did as well. Um, hope we get to see you again. Thanks for having me, Matt. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our hosts and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. 
Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA Show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community. Cheers. Cheers.